I'm uh, Dr. Martini. For those of you who don't know me, uh, we have a lovely little gathering today. I gave it a title, Creating the Life That You Dream Of by Utilizing a Master Plan. I'd like to um, take a moment to discuss that topic. And if you have something to write with and write on, in all probability, the notes that you take will be valuable to you. There's a basic principle in life, in physics, that if you don't organize things, nature disorganizes. It's called entropy. The tendency to go from order to disorder. And if you don't keep up a house, it deteriorates. You don't keep up a car, it deteriorates. Any mechanical contraption, anything made of matter and energy will undergo entropy if you're not organizing it. Erwin Schrodinger, the Nobel Prize winner, wrote a book called What is Life? And in 1944, he published this book. It's a classic. And he talked about negative entropy, the reverse of entropy, the tendency to go from chaos to order or disorder to order. And life is in that direction. <clears throat> life physics is disorder to order. Death physics is order to disorder. So anything that you don't bring order to automatically undergoes disorder. So if you don't fill your day with high priority actions that inspire you, that is in the direction of what you dream about, <clears throat> automatically the forces of nature undergo entropy. And I made the statement that the reason is because any organism that's not fulfilling its purpose and not doing something that's bringing life, it'll automatically be decayed and brought to death so the atoms and molecules by conservation laws will be used by those organisms that will. So to those who have more is given, to those who have more is taken away. So I'm gonna say it again, that if you don't fill your day with the highest priority actions that are deeply meaningful, that are most important, that are purpose fulfilling, your day is going to fill up with unexpected breakdowns. Now, let me, let me elaborate on that. That occurs for space, that occurs for time, that occurs for energy, and occurs for matter or resources. So if you don't fill in your space with high priority items and bring order and organization, so you know where everything is, everything has its place and everything is in its place, entropy will take over and chaos will ensue. And when it comes to uh, products, for instance, in a warehouse, if it's not organized, there's a less efficient production and sales of product. Time, if you don't fill your time with high priority actions that inspire you, your time fills up with low priority distractions that don't. In all probability, you've had moments in your life where you had no agenda for the day and then unexpected things showed up and wiped out your day. And at the end of the day, you went, wow, what a hell of a day. I would, man, just one thing after another came in and I just didn't get anything done that I was intended to. If you don't schedule it and you don't structure it, it's going to get filled up with other things. And I've, I've watched that. I, I learned that when I was in the health profession. I always cluster booked. I learned to cluster book my activities because when I cluster booked and pre-planned and filled the day with very important things, I ended up with self-worth going up, more accomplishment, et cetera. The same thing for energy. If you don't put your energy into things that inspire you, you end up having to drain your energy on things that don't. And the same thing for money. If you don't put your money into assets that accumulate, I guarantee you, you're going to have unexpected bills that will depreciate your potential wealth building. Now, this law is not violatable. Nobody's going to violate it. I've watched it work for many, many years, four decades plus. And I'm absolutely certain that you are the only one responsible for organizing your day. If you wait for somebody else to do it, you're probably gonna be living in the shadows of others. Any area of your life you don't empower, you're gonna be overpowered in. And the people around you have their own values and they're gonna impose on the, onto you their values. There'll be opportunities to try to fulfill what they want and they may, not, they may sacrifice you to get it. So you cannot expect some genie or somebody on the outside to be dedicated to your fulfillment. If you don't do it, they're not. So you have to be able to say no 
to things that are lower in priority and say yes to the things that are really important in your life. And I guarantee you, after doing this many, many years, if you structure and plan your day and fill it with an agenda, it's easier to say no to people. Because you go, really, right now I'm, 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 I'm booked. I won't be able to do it. I'll have to get back with you. And you can say no to people. If you have nothing on your plate, it's easy to get inundated with unexpected and you'll be less efficient and you'll let distractions take over. The internet will take over, social media will take over, all the things around you that may or may not be priority will occupy that, that time. I used to notice that in my practice when I didn't have a very cluster book practice with patients right back to back. A salesperson would show up, something would break down, entropy took over. This is such an important principle that you definitely want to make sure that you take command. Any area of your life you don't empower, other people will overpower. If you don't empower yourself intellectually, you'll be told what to think. And you're going to get inundated ideas popping in your head. And I guarantee nobody is dedicated to your fulfillment. If you, don't, if you don't empower yourself in business, you'll be told what to do. Because you're not willing to be an entrepreneur and take the risks out there and see the market and realize there's an unlimited potential. And you'll be told what to do and you'll basically be trapped. If you don't empower yourself financially, again, you'll be told what you're worth and told what you'll be paid because you're not taking command of being the entrepreneur. If you're not empowered in, in your relationship, you'll probably be told to do little things around the house that you don't want to do. Uh, instead of hiring somebody and going, taking command and going, building your business and paying for people to take care of those things. When it comes to social, if you don't empower yourself socially, you'll be told the propaganda to believe and you'll watch TV and social media and all this stuff out there. And as Paul Dirac said, the Nobel Prize winner, it's not that we don't know so much, we know so much that didn't sell. There's a lot of false and misinformation out there that you're being bombarded by. And if you run by your life by that and not classical information that stands the test of time, you won't stand the test of time. You won't bring order to your life. And the next one, physically. If you don't empower yourself physically, you'll be told what drugs to take, what organs to remove, because there's a multi-trillion dollar friggin' business sitting there marketing you drugs all the time and thinking that you need to have, you have extra organs you need removing. So just get real and realize that. Spiritually, same thing. If you don't empower spiritually and go and study the cosmos and the greatest worship of the universe is the study of the universe. If you don't go out there and study it as it really is, you'll fall for some antiquated model, some dogma that's, that's ridiculous. You have to be willing to go and empower all seven areas of your life. And that leads me to a very important component, which is what the title of this program this morning is about, planning. There's an executive function in the forebrain that's involved in mitigating risk, strategically planning, and having foresight, and thinking things out in advance, and thinking what could go wrong, and planning for it, and, and, and basically making sure that no matter what happens, you win. And if an individual is not planning, they're planning to fail. They're planning to fall, if you will, into entropy. Not fail, but fall into entropy. Now, what's interesting is in, in Harvard many, many years ago, I remember when I was in my 20s, I read this, that the people that planned went farther than the people who didn't in life. And, the, and Alec McKenzie in his time trap, people that plan and delegate go farther than people that don't and just do the work. So if you're not taking the time to plan and structure what it is you want and fill your day with what it is, and delegating lower party things, guaranteed to have less of a fulfilling life, guaranteed to have less productivity and overall achievement. So when I was 17 years old, I met Paul Bragg. He's the one that inspired me one night, a week before my 18th birthday, to write out what I wanted to do with myself, my family, my community, my city, my state, my nation, my world, and beyond for 120 years. No one ever told me to do that. That's the first time I ever sat down and actually write down what would I like to do in all those areas. And then he said that whatever we think about, visualize, affirm, feel, and take actions toward is what happens. And if you don't write it out, you'll probably let the things on the outside uh, take command of you. Also, if you go into a grocery store, a department store, because the, the, the sales people are out trying to sell you, every advertisement, every marketing, every markdown, everything is geared to sell. So if you're not going in there with an agenda, you're going to get bombarded by impulsive, immediate gratifying deals, and you have a tendency to want to immediately buy. Then you walk out of there going, I really didn't need that, but I bought it. And you let the world on the outside dictate your destiny instead of the voice and vision on the inside. 
as I said in The Secret many years ago, almost 14 years ago, 13 years ago now, that when the voice and the vision on the inside is louder than all opinions on the outside, you begin to master your life. So here's the thing. You want to plan your life. And the reason why most people are afraid to and don't stick to it is because they've injected the values of others in their life. They've not been setting real goals in real time. They're not really living by their highest value. They're attempting to live by other people's value. They end up self-defeating. They beat themselves up. They go, I don't want to set a goal because it's painful because it never comes true. A real goal that is congruent with your real highest values, that is strategically planned, that is pursued with metrics and consistent application of energy towards it, builds momentum to achievement. If every single day you work towards the thing that you actually want in life, you're going to get it. As long as it's something that's really high in your values, that's reasonable in the sense that it's doable by a human being, and I don't know what limits those really are, and you're really to take the action steps and little baby steps and not stop until you get it. You know, I, I was the least likely individual to be able to travel the world and teach when I started, but I didn't give up on it. And I laid out a plan and I followed the plan and I updated the plan. I started the planning. I started my plan in 1972. Today, that plan looks like this, which is research, write, travel, teach, the state of my mission book. Now this book is one of 25 volumes in that master plan that I have been working on for the last 47 years. That plan book has everything in it all of my objectives, all of my metrics, all the goals that I've had, the, the achievements that I've done. If I say that I want to travel to each country, I keep a list of all the countries I've been to and of all the countries I haven't been to, and that's mapped. If I say I want to do a certain number of programs, it's mapped. Some of the, some of the companies I want to do consulting for or speaking to, mapped. The, the, the economic goals, mapped. Anything that you really, really, really want, you'll metric it. And you'll monitor the progress and you look at what's working, what's not working, you'll find, you'll find a way of getting it. There's, there's seven questions you want to ask yourself, which I explained in the Breakthrough Experience. If never been to the Breakthrough Experience, please come to the Breakthrough Experience. You can make a change in trajectory of your life. What is it you would absolutely love to do? How would you uh, get handsomely and beautifully paid to do it? What are the highest priority actions I can do today that makes me one step closer to fulfilling that? What worked and what didn't work today? How, what, what's the obstacles I'm going to run into? How do I solve in advance? What worked, what didn't work today? How do I do it more effectively and efficiently tomorrow? And how did whatever I experienced help me get there? If you ask those questions and you write those down and start with what you know on a piece of paper or possibly on a file on your computer and start mapping out your plan. My master plan, uh, which I have been teaching now for nearly 30 years, um, every year I teach a program called Master Planning. The purpose of that plan is to help people do what I've done. And my master plan has got gratitudes in it. It's got a posthumous biography in it. It's got everything mapped out. And I love going through it. It's the most inspiring book I have in my life. I work on it every single day. It's literally updated as of last night, late. And um, it's just amazing. It's the most inspiring book I have. Anybody who's ever read it is just almost brought to tears because they go, wow, what an amazing uh, focus. When you write down exactly what you want and you take actions on it every single day, you increase the probability of achieving it. You know, I'm sure you've been through a situation where you wrote something down, you thought about it, and all of a sudden these synchronicities started showing up in your life because your mind's alert to it, so it sees opportunities. The key is to making sure that you start with what you know you're committed to, what your life demonstrates is truly high on your values, something that's not just a whim, not some fantasy, but is truly something your life demonstrates. If you haven't been on our website and done the value determination process, it's time to go on there. Do the value determination. It's complimentary. It's free. The value determination is going there and take advantage of what that is and go and do it again and again and again until you got a tear in your eye and you go, that's what I'm committed to. Then start planning your life to fulfill that, whatever that top value is, top three values really in your life. If you do that, you'll be spontaneously inspired to do it. You'll not stop in doing it. You don't need to be motivated. You'll be reminded internally, not externally. You won't let things on the outside distract you because you know what it is. And that is the key. And start with what you know and let what you know grow. When I first started my mission, I knew that I wanted to overcome my learning problems. I knew I wanted to learn how to speak. I knew I wanted to learn how to be intelligent. 
I knew I learned I wanted to be a teacher. I knew I wanted to travel. I wrote down what I knew, what my life proved and demonstrated, and I knew. And then I built on it, and I read it, and then I edited it. And I read it, and I added three words. And I read it, and I edited it again. I put a new sentence in. I read it, and I tweaked it again. And then I read something else, and then I found something that was inspiring to me, and I stuck it in there. And I started building my master plan. I took pictures that inspired me, I put it in there. I took uh, audios that I, was inspired me, and I linked them. Today, with the, the internet, we can build amazing master plans. Every year, I do the master planning program. Then, in fact, I'm doing it in a few months here, next, a few weeks, actually, and online. And, and, I, and I tell you, that has been one of the most significant exercises I've done. If you saw the amount of hours I put into it, you'd see that I take it seriously. It's not a joke. It's a real 25 volumes of this. That's a thousand something pages right there. Yeah, that's almost a thousand pages. And there's 25 of those. So that's how serious I've taken. That's a lot of hours put into it. And it, it has paid off. It's helped me develop my mind. It's helped me develop my international business. It's helped me get my financial independence, which I have. It's helped me have a global relationship dynamic. It's helped me have a, the, the social leadership role I have. It's helped me have the vitality I have at 66 of us. And it's helped me be inspired and create a spiritual movement in the world, an inspired movement. So I'm absolutely certain that it paid off and it still pays off and I still do it every single day. And I, I can't emphasize how important it is to take command of your life. Nobody's going to get up in the morning and dedicate their life to you except you. So it's, it's up to you. And it all it takes is a little bit every day. It, it, by the inch, it's a cinch. It's a little bitty tweaking every day. You read it, you tweak it. You read it, you tweak it. You read it, refine it. Read it, refine it. You're refining your plan about how you want your life daily. And, and if you, you, know, you can't make a mistake because you can tweak it tomorrow. If you discover something about yourself and you go, okay, that wasn't quite it, you modify it, tweak it. But you keep refining it. It's like a rocket. It takes off. It's a little wobbly at first and eventually gets straight. And the same thing, you, you learn about yourself as you go. But if you don't plan, you're almost guaranteed to let the world on the outside take command of you. And I guarantee you, nobody's going to dedicate to your fulfillment. So define the basics in there. Make sure you have a list of your values. Go online, do the value determination, list your values. Do it again and again and again until you're certain that's your values. And do it every quarter because they can tweak and you need to modify and tweak and adjust. It's a constant adjustment. No plan is set in stone, although some things will be pretty stable, but write down what it is that you're committed to your values. Then write down a mission statement of what you want to dedicate your life to. It can be all inclusive to all seven areas of your life or three areas or four hours. It's totally up to you. It's your life. There's no rules out there. You're not here to compare yourself to somebody else. You're here to compare your own actions to your own values and dreams. I just worked yesterday in, in uh, Wales and Cardiff on a podcast or a webinar last night. And uh, it's interesting. There was a lady who's an Olympic medalist there. And um, she was talking about how she could not, be, she could not distract herself by anybody on the other side, she had to focus on her goal. And that's how she did it. And she's a world-class athlete because she's focused on that objective. And she wrote them down and she mapped it out. The same thing for another one. And I met in, there's a pole vaulter in Australia and Melbourne, same thing, mapped it out. She had a plan. And so taking the time, if you write down fantasies, you'll self-defeat and beat yourself up. If you write down a plan and refine it and make a commitment to it, and then watch the progress and look at the feedback and let the metrics guide you, You'll keep refining that plan until you go, bam, that's what I'm up to. And you just keep working on it, little baby steps every single day. Then you write your mission statement. Then you write your goals in each of the seven areas of life, true objectives, not fantasies, and just keep refining them. And then start keeping metrics. Like I said, when I, when I said that I wanted to do a thousand doctor's offices in the 1980s, I accomplished a thousand doctor office consults that I got to go into actually in the office, sometimes four a week in the, in the 80s. And so I wrote them down, what the names of the doctor's office, the clinics, everything else, how many of them that I was doing, how many patients they were doing, what the metrics I saw, how many people I was increasing the practice by consulting with them, how many increase in dollars that they generate. I kept metrics of that because I wanted to make a goal and I set it, I metriced it and watched it and I got the result. So taking the time to do it. Some of you think, well, I'm not into all that. <laughs> well, okay, then let the world run you. That's, it's that simple. The people who are not taking the time to plan out their life for the people that have other people plan it. So my advice, take the time to think about how you want it. 
If you're concentrating on solutions, not you won't get the problems. If you focus on the problems, you won't get the solutions. But if you master plan your life, you'd be surprised at how many opportunities will come in your life that you would miss out on because your eyes were not looking for it and you didn't plan out for it. And, then, and if you need mentorship, then I'll help you. There's master planning for you. There's, there's, there's many, I have podcasts that come in every week. I've got blogs every week. I got educational system, take advantage of it. Don't reinvent a wheel, take advantage, stand on the shoulders of others. Don't imitate me, learn from it and do it in your own way, create your own. I've had many people come to master planning, create their own versions of it. I've given, I, it's, I have 2000 questions in master planning where I ask people to do it, to fill in these questions, just get it started. And then they, they develop and tweak it the way they want, go in their own direction with it. But they, they want to have a plan. And then all of a sudden, keep your metrics, keep your gratitude journal, put your post biography in there. My post biography that I wrote for how I want to be perceived a thousand years from now, much of it has already come true. I didn't have to wait a thousand years to get the outcome. So we go around and say we have immortal souls, but we don't get a more, write down immortal goals. So write down goals that are even beyond your life that you can work on so you have something to be focused on. Or otherwise you're done and you, there's no done with your life. You be, we can be working right to the end of your life if you want. So consistently taking the time to write out how you want. Every moment you're focusing on how you want it, you're increasing the probability of momentum and bringing order to your life, not entropy, but neg entropy to get the outcome you want. So I just wanted to take a time to share how important that is. Um, I'm amazed. I, I One of my goals that I wrote when I was uh, uh, 16 years old, in Hawaii, I uh, I wanted to go surfing. I wanted to go surfing. At 49 years ago, I wrote this down. Uh, in my head, I first wrote it down in my head, and then at about 17, when I met Paul Bragg, I actually wrote it down, that I wanted to go surfing on the North Shore when I was 65 years old. There I am surfing the North Shore, Oahu, at 65, last November. So that's a goal that manifested and became a reality because I wrote it down and put it into op op operation, planned it out, made it happen. And, and it's amazing what's happening. So take the time to plan your life, uh, master plan your life. If you want to be a master of your life, take all seven areas, define how you want it, keep refining it, put action steps there, get mentorship if you need to. I'll be glad to help you. Uh, come to master planning if necessary. Take advantage of our educational experience, our podcasts that come in every single week online the education that's sitting on all the thousands of interviews and articles and videos and YouTubes that are on our website. Take advantage of breakthrough, anything you can take advantage of, but master plan your life. Your life is going to go by quicker than you think. I'm 66 almost, and it goes by really quick. And if, and if you didn't take command at the end of your life, you're going to have Bonnie wears five major regrets. And there's no reason to have a regret in life. You want to be able to be go, wow, we did it. We, we accomplished amazing things. We made, we made a difference in the world. If you want to make a difference, you got to stand out, not fit in. And if you just let everybody tell you what to do, you're going to fit in and not stand out and make the difference. So master planning for life. Give yourself permission to do it. Uh, I've just given you some guidelines. Uh, please take advantage of that. It has been one of the most significant things I've done in my life. I have an amazing life today because of that. And I want you to have the same amazing life. And I can guarantee you the time spent is insignificant compared to the time it will save you and the opportunities that will arise. So that's it. Just wanted to take the time to do that. And I think uh, there's something I want to give you as a, as a gift at the end to help you. You know, there's a, I, I, I know that if you want to make a difference in yourself and get beyond your own anxieties and fears, if you have a goal that's at least the size of your family, you'll be less, if you've got problems and you have kids and things like that and keep you busy, you know, helping, you're not focused on your problems. And so the same thing, if you want to make a difference in your family, you need a vision as big as your community. If you want to make a difference in your community and be a leader in your community, you need a vision as big as your city. If you want to be number one in the city, you need a vision as big as your state. If you want to be number one in the state, you need a vision as big as your country. You need number one in the country or nation, you need a global vision. You want to be number one in the globe, you need an astronomical vision. Well, I'm about having astronomical visions. I study astronomy, astrophysics, nuclear physics, every discipline. 299 different disciplines to expand my awareness so I have a bigger vision and so I have a deeper appreciation of the magnificent universe that we're in and have that. And I notice that the bigger my vision, the bigger the outcomes in my life. So I, I'm going to give this a gift to you. It's called uh, Awakening Your Astronomical Vision. And it's about 
It's a live presentation I did at a planetarium to YPO group in uh, South Africa in Johannesburg. And it was an extraordinary evening. And I know it will be inspiring to you. It'll make you look at a bigger bi vision for yourself. You'll give yourself permission to think outside the box. And you'll do a greater, more expanded master plan. Because surprisingly enough, a bigger plan just makes a bigger life. It doesn't take it. You can make a small plan or a bigger plan, but the same amount of energy is going to go into it and the same amount of energy is going to make it happen. And what's interesting is a bigger plan gives you a bigger life. So take advantage of this free gift. It's a value of $50. Just go to demartini.inc or slash create to claim it. And I am absolutely certain that that will be listened to more than once. It's an inspiring uh, gift. And I just please take that and please use that and start on a master plan. And if you need help, come to master planning or come and contact us at the office or whatever, and we'll do what we can to help and fill your mind. Every single day you fill your mind with information that helps you expand on solution orientation that inspires you. And every time you do something that serves people, that makes a difference in there, you're going to have more fulfillment in life. So plan it out and don't let the world on the outside interfere with the dream on the inside. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you at the next uh, event. And um, thanks for being with me today. And enjoy your day and be inspired by your master plan. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.